Hello, everyone. I am Susan Gerpik. I attended SciCon 2023, held at the Flamingo Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada, and in late October of 2023. I have filmed a bunch of quick clips that I am sharing with you. I am not a professional. I am just releasing these videos unedited, unedited. So I did not go to film. I just used my iPhone. Um, I did not have a tripod. So if it jiggles, it's because my arm was tired or I was laughing. So what you're going to see today in this video is a panel discussion. It was held on Saturday, October 28th at 11 to 1. It was, or 11 to 12. It is clips I made as I was going through listening. It is called Young Skeptics Creating the Future. It's a panel discussion with Stephen Hupp, Melanie Tresha King, Bertha Vasquez, and Richard Weissman. It was so much fun. I had a blast listening to it. I, as I said, I didn't mean to record. I just picked up my phone and hit record. And then they said something else. And I said, oh, that's going to be interesting. And I just recorded that too. So please subscribe to the Center for Inquiries YouTube channel. They have the official videos that will be of this panel that are released coming up in probably January of 2024 is when you can start looking for those videos. So hit the alert button for Center for Inquiry so you will be notified when they start uploading the videos. You can also go back and look at the past PsyCon videos as well as some amazing uh, interviews and talks that are on the YouTube channel for Center for Inquiry. In the meantime, this is the Susan Gerbic channel. You're welcome to subscribe and leave me comments. I will make up something <laughs> if I don't know the answer. No, I'm only kidding. But I'm happy to communicate with you. But I, I am just a fellow attendee of PsyCon. I hope that this gives you a look at what PsyCon is like from a different perspective of somebody in the audience and a feel for how fun it was, how powerful it was, what fantastic conversations, great talks. It, it's just a blast. So share this video if you like and watch the others in the same playlist for PsyCon 2023. I give you this video and I hope you enjoy. Uh, not to spoil the video for everybody, but uh, most of you have probably seen it. It's been seen by over 4 million people. And in the color changing card trick, he deals out some cards and somebody picks a card. And over the course of the trick, the cards change from um, something to something. Blue to red or red to blue or something like that. And then you, you pan out. And then you actually realize that wasn't the trick. The trick was that his shirt changed color, the background changed color, and other aspects of the scene changed color during the color changing card trick. And today I have performed the color changing card trick! <laughs> I started with the blue shirt. I couldn't take it off very easily. I used to have blue Gatorade. Oh! My power balance bracelet used to be black, but now it's Vegas and shiny. And our background used to be purple, but now it's green. Awesome! Awesome! A lot has been happening. I've removed my pants. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll stick to the Q&A all seated, I think. Um, but, uh, yeah, thank you. Very, very good. Very good. Um, to me, the, the fascinating talk. The, uh, right, okay, right. The, so it is a perfect opportunity for us to yes. say, come, oh, we have cookies, right? <laughs> by the way, it, one of the ways outside by the coffee, we are trying to promote Science Appreciation Day. We're asking states to creating a proclamation to make March 26th National Science Appreciation Day. All you have to do is point the phone at the QR code and ask your states, governments uh, in your states, I think we have 15 at this point, to adopt National Science Appreciation Day. And that's another way to do it. Yeah, uh, yeah okay, fantastic, fantastic. Um, 
we, uh, we're going to uh, we start a little bit late, so we'll, we'll run over a little bit, um, and we're going to take audience questions. So if you have questions, if you put up your hand, and George can get to you. Um, meanwhile, sorry. Yeah, I actually I had a question for you um, because this Generation Skeptics program that you're trying to um, to build. Um, what I heard for the um, recommendations of the audience was um, to I guess let me ask: Can anyone start those programs? Would it be helpful to have people who are interested? Try to start programs at the local library or the local yes. library. Or... Thank you for bringing that up. Okay. I was nervous <laughs> I was about to say that. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes, please see me. I have cards out there in the same place where you can take the QR code for National Science Appreciation Day. I will help you. Let's get some Gen Skeps clubs going. I have them in schools at this point, but why not libraries? Why not UU churches? I'm going to a church in Naples. It's not a church, it's a, a universal Unitarian. Thing. And I'm, we're starting a Gen Skeps club there and a Gen Skeps camp, hopefully there. So if you have ideas, I need your help. It would be a great way to get involved. Thank you. So, I'm creating these videos. Are there other terms that you try to avoid that you know turn people off? This is for all four of you as teachers. Are there things that universally turn kids off or non-critical thinkers off? So, but so, so my story I always tell is being at the um, some big sales award I was talking at it probably 25 years ago and somebody won salesperson of the year and they came and sat at my table and I said what's the secret to selling and they whispered I turned them over and whispered find something everybody wants to buy <laughs> and I don't think everybody wants to buy critical thinking and science but if you say it's a bet you can win everybody wants to buy that and then suddenly they're thinking hold on a minute but you've run one glass and the other one move. What's that about? It's very hard. People are naturally curious. I think curiosity is something we all have, and, you, and, and, and all you need to do is just show some counterintuitive. And, and that's, it's very hard to see the counterintuitive guy not interested. So, so yeah, I, th those are the terms because I, I'd just much rather talk about curiosity than, than those sorts of terms where I know it's going to push some people away. Sorry, other, other panelists, thoughts on that? Uh, I'll just say I do fully embrace uh, terms like skepticism, uh, but I think the world needs uh, all types of skeptics and some that you know use that term more and some that use it less. I did create a course at my university called uh, Seminar in Skepticism, and nobody signed up. Uh, and so the next summer I did the same course, but I called it Exploring Strange Things, ESP, UFOs, Bigfoot, and more, and everybody signed up. <laughs> So I do think there is something to that, but that said, Skeptical Inquirer magazine has embraced the word skeptical for almost 50 years, and a print magazine the last 50 years is quite an amazing thing. Okay, we have time for like... Hi. Sure. Okay, so the question I have for you folks is we're talking about how can we spread this information, you know, around the world. Um, I'm big on social media, so I want to use my platform to be able to um, talk about this stuff. However, um, I've, so I'm a social science uh, student, so I talk a lot about that, but I've gotten a lot of backlash, a lot of hate. How do you folks deal with that? Because um, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> yeah, I'm an emotional individual, and so thinking about talking about topics like this on social media is very exciting, but also very scary. So yeah, you folks great question. Um, so I will say what, what I do, um, and my, my bigger site is Facebook, and I, look, I don't have the followers people have here. I've got like 42,000 or something. So um, I focus my science communication on what I call the normals, right? So in a bell curve, there are the people in the middle. Like, it, it's a dumb joke, I get it. But like, people over here don't need me, and people over here with my time and ability, I'm not going to reach. Um, I've been on social media sites that don't do moderation, and I don't like to participate in those sites because um, people are, um, people don't know how to have good conversations and the trolls take over. So I do try really hard to be on top of the content moderation. It is a lot of time and mental energy and I see a lot of misogynistic and like terrible comments. But I want the space to be one where people can learn, where people feel that they can ask questions or they can have those good kinds of conversations. So I, my approach is to really be heavy handed and to, if someone needs banned, they are just banned. And if I think I can sway them, then I like to model. 
Um, I like to um, ask questions. Um, if, if it needs to, I'll just be on them, but otherwise, I mean, that's my approach. I wish I had a shortcut to it, it is really time consuming. Do you get that? Do you get the hate stuff? Oh, I'd imagine so, I don't look. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just assuming I do. Uh, do you, so for me, beliefs are like, I view them like emotions. They, they do work, they do work. So, you know, if you've lost, lost a loved one and somebody says they can talk to that person, well, that makes you feel better if, you, if you've got some kind of illness and the faith healer says they can cure you, that makes you, give you hope. If you're worried about the future, as many, many people are, and the psychic says I can alleviate that anxiety, then you feel good about that. And the longer we come, and we take away those things, people are angry because they care, because those, are, those beliefs are doing work in their lives. So I don't see it as anger, I see it as evidence of people caring and evidence of the importance of what we do. And if people tried to take away beliefs that made, my, made, me, made me feel good, I would be angry too. So to the extent I can, I try to be empathic about what, what, what's happening? Yeah, what are we here? I don't know this. You had a science teacher uh, have their beliefs go into the classroom, their own beliefs. I've had a lot of science teachers um, express their own beliefs in my science classrooms when I was growing up as well. Is, is there anything that we can do to not let, um, not let, I don't know if that's a great word, these science teachers' beliefs run the classroom, run their classroom? That is so hard. It is hard because you don't want your child to be the one targeted by that teacher. And they're not just science teachers. And where I worked, there was a social studies department as well. I always suggest that the parents write a letter to the principal, and if the, and even if it's anonymous, because I understand you don't want your child targeted in that class. That's a really tough question. But it happened in our school with the vaccine stuff, and the parents wrote letters anonymously that this was going on. This guy was saying that the vaccine was like the Holocaust. Yeah, and the principal who was an anti-vaxxer, she smushed that. I mean, that guy was not allowed to say that anymore. He was not allowed to promote anti-vaccine uh, propaganda in his class anymore. But I would do it anonymously because a child could face consequences. I, I know that's not a great answer. My science teacher was saying that by washing your hands, you were creating super germs. So that was just a very specific example. Isn't it? It might be. If you like somebody who's tone deaf teaching music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have time for one more question, so another random psychon attendee. <laughs> this is entirely frivolous of the of Alpha. I'm so delighted science appreciation day is March the 26th. It happens to be my birthday. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, well, just before I hand back to, uh, uh, to George and uh, Odessi, just...